It is special election day in Ohio, and we have two and a half hours now until the polls close. We are also on track to have unprecedented voter turnout for an August vote. The stakes are high, and the one issue on the ballot goes to the heart of the state constitution. NBC4 is your local election headquarters. Good evening to you, everybody. Thanks for joining us tonight at 5. I'm Carrie Charles. And I'm Jennifer Bullock. Stay with us after the polls close for the latest election results. The single issue on the ballot is issue one, asking voters if it's should be harder to amend Ohio's constitution, raising the voter threshold to pass an amendment to 60%. Since 1912, Ohio has used a simple majority, 50% plus one, in order to amend the state constitution. Issue one only applies to citizen-led efforts to pass a constitutional amendment. This is Ohio's first election under newly passed rules, including requiring a photo ID to make your vote count. Now, initially there were fears no one would come out to vote in August, but that certainly is not the case. Interest in this election is high, and tonight we are bringing you team coverage. This Sierra Johnson is at a watch event with opponents of Issue 1. Kyle Beachy is with supporters of Issue 1, but we begin with Natalie Fami, who is breaking down the unprecedented voter turnout. And Natalie, voters are motivated for this special election. Yeah, Carrie, like you said, we are seeing higher than expected voter turnout in this August special election with early voting numbers already far exceeding the early vote numbers for the last August special primary and last year's May primary. It's a $16 million special election funded by the state budget on the taxpayers dime. Plus millions of dollars are pouring into the state to support campaigns on each side of the issue. And with all this money being spent, some lawmakers and policy experts said the turnout would not justify the cost of creating this election. But so far, just in early voting, both in person and absentee, nearly 700,000 Ohioans cast their ballot. That number already on par with the total turnout for the August special election last year. Secretary of State Frank LaRose says the early voter turnout can be attributed to Ohio's easy to vote and hard to treat system. Plus, he says this is a particularly motivated election. We were excited to see high turnout in both urban and rural areas all throughout the state. And what it shows, first of all, is that Ohioans know how important issue one is and, and want to get out there and make their voice heard on that. Polls are open until 730 tonight. You also have until then to drop off your absentee ballot at your local county board of elections. And LaRoe says we'll start seeing those early vote and absentee ballot results tabulated by around 815 tonight with unofficial results before the end of the night. Local for you at the Franklin County Board of Elections. I'm Natalie Fahmy, NBC4. And of course, we have coverage for you throughout the evening. More on our special coverage for you in just a moment. Tonight, both sides are gathering to hear the results. Opponents of issue one are gathering at the Firefighters Hall in downtown Columbus. That's where NBC4 Sierra Johnson is tonight. Sierra. Yeah, it's still a little early. As you mentioned, I am downtown at Firefighter Hall. They're still working to set up some of that signage, but this is where the backers of that vote node side will gather to watch those results come in. I had a chance to speak with an organizer, and he says the gathering tonight is really the culmination of work that began back in November to preserve democracy, as is, again, right now, that vote no side preparing for what could be hundreds to gather downtown. Organizer Dennis Willard, with one person, one vote says the vote no team has been working since November and everyone is well aware of what's at stake in terms of shifting that threshold to 60 percent, as well as that national attention that this race has received. He explains the organization has been keeping an eye on those early voting numbers as well as those lines in a matter of hours, the returns that make their way in. He tells us tonight is the true test of a hard fought campaign. I think what really matters is the core issue, which is majority rules. From since November, people have felt that 50 plus one equals democracy, and that 60 percent as a threshold would put 40 percent of the people in Ohio in charge and, and to be able to basically block the will of the people. So since November, we've had that same idea and that momentum, and we've been working aggressively. 
And that spokesperson tells me as we inch closer to that hour when the polls do close, we can expect hundreds of folks here, mainly those who worked on this vote no campaign, as well as some local lawmakers and some of those um, in favor of reproductive rights. So we'll be here all night, of course, bring you what comes out of this vote no side in downtown Columbus. We're live at the Firefighters Union in downtown Columbus, Sierra Johnson, NBC4. All right, Sierra, thank you. And now to the supporters of issue one, Kyle Beachy joins us from downtown Columbus, where he spoke with leaders of the Vote Yes campaign. Kyle. Jennifer, we're here at the State House, where just across the street, the Republican Senate campaign committee is hosting a private event for the Vote Yes campaign tonight. Now, they're not calling it a party, more of a war room style atmosphere to watch those election results come in. Of course, issue one has been in the works for quite some time, and it stands to be critical in the upcoming November election. We're expecting policy leaders and supporters from Ohio Right to Life, Protect Women Ohio, and others to be here tonight, anxiously awaiting the results of this year-long process. Now, I spoke with leaders from the Ohio Right to Life, and they're feeling good about the turnout and the prospect of getting this issue passed. We've worked tirelessly over the past 90 days to go to each community, all 88 counties on, on the corner square and debate this issue. Should we protect our Constitution or should it be for sale? And we believe tonight when all the votes are counted, not the early votes, but when all the votes are counted, we are going to be successful. And Ohioans are going to stand up and say enough is enough. I'll be here live all evening getting reaction as the polls close and those count those ballots are passed and we'll see what the reaction is from the vote yes campaign here. Local for you in Columbus, I'm Kyle Beachy, NBC4. All right, Mr. Beachy, thanks. Opponents say this is an effort to make it harder to enshrine abortion rights in the Constitution. Pro-choice activists were able to get a proposed abortion rights amendment on the November 7th election ballot. It would establish the right to an abortion up to the point of fetal viability. A recent Suffolk University USA Today poll says 58 percent of Ohio voters surveyed support a constitutional right to abortion. Election officials say every vote will be counted after some voters in Summit County experienced issues with ballot scanners. A spokesman for Secretary of State Frank LaRose says the issues were isolated to two polling locations there. Director Lance Reed of the Summit County Board of Elections tells NBC4 the county switched to new voting equipment this year. Summit County voters use paper ballots and after some troubleshooting, Reed believes the thickness of the paper was causing the problem. The board sent a bipartisan team to affected polling locations to look at the machines and make sure all ballots were tabulated. At no point did any polling locations shut down. You can scan the QR code on your screen and get linked to live election results on NBC4i.com. Now stay with NBC4 on air and online for the latest results as they come into our newsroom. We will break into coverage throughout the evening with the latest updates and keep you continuously updated over on our website. NBC4 is your local election headquarters.